Hey, nerdlings! What up, nerdlings? Do you nerd for celebrities from space? Or just celebrities from Earth, so check out the Jewel State Q&A panel. We have a very, very special guest for you today. She's been in Firefly, she's been in Stargate Atlanta, she's been in the LA Complex, she's been in everything. Please give a warm Vision Con welcome to Jewel State! <laughs> That was nice. <laughs> you guys, nice people. Thanks for having me. Yeah, we are so happy to have you here. Um, so, what do you think of Springfield so far? Oh my god, it's super cute. <laughs> we went to an amazing dinner last night at a place called Progress. It was good. We ordered too much, as usual. Um, but it was delicious. So, so far, Springfield, you are delicious. <laughs> yeah, we, we appreciate that. And, and it is unseasonably cool outside. Does it remind you of home at all? It does, although it's very hot at home right now, uh, apparently. As soon as we left, it got hot. Climate change. That's what happens. But I'm usually, like, people apologize a lot for the weather when I go to places. Like, sorry about the rain out there. I'm like, I have no idea what it's doing out there. <laughs> the interesting part about doing conventions is that you basically only see the convention center. Do you know what I mean? So it's, it's almost not fair for me to say I've been anywhere. <laughs> because I, I, you know, I'm happy to be at the convention. But yeah, it's kind of like an in and out sort of thing. So we try and do as much as we can in the evenings and see as much as we can, but it's tough, you know? I gotta rush home to a kiddo who's waiting for me. Damn kids, just kidding. <laughs> so, speaking of kids, your son is three and yeah, a half? Yeah, three and a half. Right? Yes. So, I know that you started acting when you were six, which is yeah. fairly young. As he approaches that age, do you plan to present acting to him as a possibility? Or do you want to keep him closer? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a weird way to grow up. And now that I'm an adult actor, when I'm on sets and working with kids, I guess it's the mom in me, but part of me is like, you should be in bed. You know, like we're doing night shoots and stuff, I'm like, oh my god, this poor kid, like it's freezing cold, and I just kind of want to like, take that kid home and, and put her to bed, you know? Um, I also had a, it's, it was just a very abnormal life. I went to most of elementary school at a real school, but a lot of my education was homeschool and tutors on set. So I didn't have things like prom and all of that stuff. The people that I talk to about this usually say, you didn't miss anything in high school, trust me. Um, but part of me just really wants him to have a normal life as much as possible. Although, he's got performer in him. Like, it's, there's nothing I can do about it. He's just... He knows all the lines from Moana. He performs the whole movie for you. There's a lot of, look at me, look at me. Everybody stop what you're doing and look at me! Um, while he does his dances and things, so... It's sort of inevitable. I'm gonna, I'm gonna push for, you know... Like, airline pilot. That would be nice, just so I could fly for free to places. Um, yeah, just like, just, you know, I, I push for a job with a normal paycheck as much as possible, but, I mean, if it's in him, it's in him. So we'll see. Yeah, yeah, my mom always jokes that she always wanted my siblings and me to either be a car mechanic, a lawyer, or a plumber, so that she'll yes. always be sad. a trade. Learn a trade. Exactly. So yes. Like, you know, regular paycheck, yes. do you see maybe a future for him in community theater or something to get that performance out, like out of him? Or not out 
of him, but to channel it yes. without necessarily sacrificing. The that that would be child. nice. I would like to be able to channel it now as much as possible because um, it's a lot. You know, three and a half is a lot as it is. So I, yeah, getting him into an activity would be very nice. But I just. I just want him to be able to be a little boy, too, and to get dirty and go to summer camp, and I didn't really get to do a lot of that stuff, so I, I push for normalcy as much as possible. And that's great. That's great. Yeah. Um, so, there have been quite a few Kaylee cosplayers around today. Anyone in the it. room right now it's dressed as there. Kaylee? It's yeah. It's yeah. It's XO, gotta love it the character. It makes me so happy. You know, I've, I've been doing conventions for a long time, and I still, like, get such a kick out of it. <laughs> so thanks. So, yeah. speaking of getting kicks, uh, do you have any particular, like, memories of interactions with fans dressed as you? There's, there's been a lot. I bet. A lot, a lot. Um, there was a girl today who was talking about making the shindig dress. Was it you? Yes. She said, you know, I, I wanted to make the big ruffled dress, and what's interesting is that when people wear that dress at conventions, they all have the same look in their eye, okay? The look is, I regret this, and the other look is, I have to pee. That dress is no picnic, so I recognize the look. Remember I told you, yeah, watch your water intake. Lena looks fabulous, but it's a sacrifice. That's definitely. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So, um, having grown up as a child actor, um, have you noticed the industry changing at all in the past 20 some odd years that you've been in oh, the game? Oh god, yeah. For the better. For the better? Oh and yes. Um, well, I mean, for actors, there's just so much more work. <laughs> Which is nice. Um, back in the day, like the Firefly days, unfortunately, there were these big juggernaut networks that basically ran the show. There was Fox, there was NBC, there was CBS, there was ABC. That was kind of it. Um, and now, there are so many other platforms for original television that all of these little shows, quirky, weird shows, are getting a fair shot. And it's so nice to see. It's a little bittersweet for me. I have a bit of a chip on my shoulder about that. Um, but it, it, it does mean that there's that much more work. And obviously, that's an awesome thing. Yeah, and speaking of Firefly, I think that has been one of the shows that has laid the foundation for the quirky spring, as it were, recently. Um, what has it meant to you to be such an integral part of one of those foundational cult shows? I mean, who would have thought, I think, you know? It's like a, oh, somebody dropped something. You okay? Are we You good? Okay. Um, we were really short-lived. I think, I think it took us four or five months to shoot the series and it took another three months to shoot the movie. So in a 30-year career, these are tiny blips in the radar, right? Um, and a lot of people don't realize that. Having said that, they were really monumental times too because we all got along so well and turned into a family. And they're still family to me. And we all still talk, we have a group chat that I have to mute. <laughs> um, and um, we knew we were the underdog from the very beginning. We were up against really big shows from the same network. A show called Fast Lane um, was like their darling. <laughs> and I know, it was like a show about racing cars. <laughs> really? Um, but they loved it and they were pushing hard for it. And I remember driving home one night from set and Fastlane had this big fancy premiere and a red carpet and I drove past the fancy premiere party and thought, huh, that's not a good sign that we're not getting a fancy premiere party. But 
Fastlane doesn't have conventions, so. Um, but yeah, it, it just, I don't know, it just snowballed. It just became this weird thing where we were told that no one was watching the show. So we believed that to be true. And then I was invited to a convention in the UK. And Nathan was invited in summer as well. And Nathan was like, I'm gonna go. Should we go? I'm like, yeah, okay, let's go. I have no idea what to expect. It was a Buffy convention. So there were a bunch of Buffy actors there. We thought, cool, okay, sweet. Free trip to the UK. Um, and when we got there, there were a lot of people dressed up like us. And we thought, oh my God, something's happening. Something's happening here. And it just grew and grew and grew. And then we did San Diego Comic Con in that big hall, Hall H or whatever it is. And there were 8,000 people there. And we were just stunned. I remember looking at Sean and Sean was like, I'm shaking. <laughs> you know, it was like, we, we, we felt it. Um, and I still feel it. It makes me really emotional, to be honest, um, because there are people who have passed it on to their children, and it, it's not going anywhere. And that makes me really happy. So. And what about Firefly, do you think? I don't know, man. I don't know. You tell me. I don't know. Um, maybe because it was about a bunch of misfits who had to learn to love each other and get along, we needed each other in the end. Um, maybe it's because we were the underdog and you guys knew that and you carried us along the way. I don't know. Whatever it is, I'm grateful as hell for it. That's all I know. That's great. So you mentioned that the cast has become something of a family. Do you oh, yeah. have any particularly funny memories I got lots. outside <laughs> filming? with any castmates? Oh god, years. Years and years of memories. That's the thing, is like, it was, it was, it took so little time to shoot the show, but like, because of the conventions and the convention circuit, we have all, we have years and years of memories. Like, I've been all over the world with those guys, and Sean, Sean's my bestie, and Sean and I uh, share our, our um, lists of booked conventions for the year, and then we just try and get on each other's track so we can travel together because it's fun. I love Sean. Um, so we've got like four coming up. We're really excited. We're like, girls weekend, yay. <laughs> um, yeah, so a, a million, a million memories. Um, they're very, very good people. They're really loyal, um, mostly kind. <laughs> Uh, fun, fun people to hang out with. So, another show that you have been a part of for more than one season is Stargate Atlantis. Yes. There we go. We've got some Stargate reps out there. Um, now, one of your co workers has moved on to become Aquaman. Who? Just oh. I think his name is. Um, it starts with the J. It starts with a J. Tall, yeah. I think maybe. Yeah, maybe. I know. Jason's this big movie star now. It's so weird. It's so weird. Um, and I kind of saw it happening. Jason and I have the same uh, convention uh, agent, so we do a lot of conventions together. And as the Aquaman effect was happening, I was watching it go down. And it was intense. It's intense. Although, it's great because Jason can get tables at restaurants. <laughs> so anytime I want to eat anywhere, I'm like, Jason, would you... Why don't we just get Jason to call? <laughs> Book a rezzo and suddenly there's a table for you at 7 o'clock. Um, but he's a doll. He, he is... He's, he's just so sweet and wonderful. He really is. And so it's all very well deserved. It's happening to a really great person. Um, my husband and I have a, a business called Tea Runners. It's, it's a, a loose leaf tea subscription box service. Um, and when we were starting Tea Runners, we were talking to Jason about it. And he was like, wait, what, what, what's this? And I'm like, well, I have, you know, do you want to try some of the tea? He's like, yeah, you know what we should do? We should take a picture of it with me and then just post it. And I was like, really? You would do that? And he's like, yeah. 
Of course I would do that. He, that's the kind of person he is. Also, he's addicted to our tea now. <laughs> I know. To I know. The interference now, but um, you speaking of posting things, um, just casually, lightly stalking your Instagram <laughs> in preparation for today. I noticed that you do some promotions for causes like the UCLA. Um, what issues or causes are important to you and why? Um, the ACLU. I gave a fight all this morning. I've been awake since five. For oh my god. Oh, I'm sorry. It's okay. That's that's really it's okay. okay. Um, I you know I I usually lean towards uh, children's charities. Um, the Sick Kids uh, Hospital, which is in Ontario, is a big one for me. I can't imagine anything worse than being a parent going through something like that with your child. So. I'm like, give them all your money. <laughs> um, I also work with a company called Stans uh, quite a bit, and they make really cool, fun t-shirts, and they um, sell them for charity, and they're kind of one of a kind. They only make so many, and they're on sale for a week or something like that, and then they go away. Um, so we're about to do uh, another shirt, uh, which I helped design. I think that's pretty cool. Um, I'm probably not allowed to talk about it, but I will, so just don't put it on the internet, okay? Um, it's a, a, a silhouette of Kaylee with a wrench and her arms folded, and it says, no frets given. <laughs> I like it. Love it. So I think it is time to open up to questions from the audience. Okay, I see some hands already. I'm going to come down and I will I will be there for you. And just She's said. going to be there for you. When the rain starts to pour. So nice. <laughs> you can also shout it if you want. Okay. Alright, I think oh, I said she has to run around. Mr. Jane Hat first. Okay. That was a very assertive. <laughs> When you were filming your episode in Supernatural, uh, were you ups upset to uh, find what happened to your character? Because watching it, I was very upset. I wanted more of that character. Um, I mean, I wasn't devastated or anything. I just sort of, I wanted to be a part of the show somehow before it was over. <laughs> 15 that years funny? later. Yeah, I, I thought, you know, like a normal TV show, they would go for seven years. So I was like, gotta get in there before Supernatural's over, and now it's like season 15 or 16 or something. Um, so I was just quite delighted to be there at all. But I am a little confused at how lots of dead people come back on that show. <laughs> but I haven't. It was another dimension. Yeah. Just another dimension. I'm just a little confused about that. And I keep saying it in the hopes that someone will hear me. <laughs> that can actually do something about it. Hashtag yes. Start the movement. You, you say that you're... Uh, the, Where are you? The, right here. There you are, Sorry. The, the, the voice. The, the group, the voice. I can lower my voice and we don't do the God thing. Um, you said that the, the crew is, is tight now that you're doing the the, uh, the con convention circuits and so on. What was it like when Roman Glass passed away? Um, I was shooting a movie in North Bay, Ontario. Bet you don't know where that is. Tiny town. Um, when I got the news. Uh, and it was Gina who told me. Um, you know, Ron was... Um, a very interesting man. He, he was funny, funny, funny. Had a very sick sense of humor. <laughs> but he was also quite private. Um, there were a lot of things we didn't know about Ron, so when we were told about his funeral, we went to the funeral um, not really knowing what to expect, and it was a Buddhist funeral. And we knew he was a Buddhist, but we had no idea um, about the community that 
also loved Ron. And it was the most incredible thing because we sat in this beautiful, beautiful temple. Um, and they all started chanting. And they chanted for a long time, and it was like a vibration in the room for Ron. It was really sudden. We all just kind of looked at each other and went, wow, this is a, it's amazing. Um, and they showed a montage of his, his work as well. When we were driving there, um, Nathan said, we were, you know, we carpooled. And Nathan said, uh, so guys, who do you think is going to cry first? And everybody said, Jewel. <laughs> Um, but in the montage, they showed uh, one of the last clips was um, uh, when Book uh, and Kaylee first meet. And Kaylee says, how come you don't care where you're going? And he says, because how you get there is the worthier part. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> done. So, uh, how come you don't care where you're going? Because how you get there is the worthier part. Um, so yeah, it's a strange thing, to be honest, that he's gone, because we're all so used to being a group, especially at these things. I'm used to leaving room on, group, on cast photos for Ron, because a lot of them are positioned next to each other. So I write small, so there's room for Ron. And it's a weird thing that I don't have to do that anymore. So we loved him, miss him a lot. <laughs> it's okay. How long does it take to make, well, how long did it take to make about an episode of Firefly? It took about six or seven working days. In the television world, we shoot usually Monday to Friday. So a week and a half-ish, it all depends on the episode, um, but usually about six or seven working days we get it all done. Sometimes you get really fast. I remember when we were doing Stargate, it was a very well-oiled machine. The crew knew each other very well, and it was just a super quick, efficient show. And, and some of them, at the end, they were trying to get us to, to shoot in five days, which is very little time to shoot an entire episode of television. Um, it's possible, but it's tough. And a lot of the time, uh, you will shoot um, two episodes at once, which can be quite a challenge. Um, when we were doing the LA Complex, in our first season we only had six episodes. And we shot the entire six episodes um, all at the same time. Which was kind of fun, but it's really difficult for continuity. If you're a script supervisor, it's not so fun. <laughs> um, but it was really neat. So it, all, it just all kind of depends on the show. What was it like working with Mark Shepard before he became popular as Crowley in Supernatural? I love Mark. I mean, Mark's a handful, okay? Mark's a handful. I love Mark. He's got this, like, and has always had, this cocky sort of swagger. But he's really sweet and lovely. He always says, love you, whenever he leaves a room. Um, he's really cute. But I brought my friend Trish to a convention. And Trish is a cop. And she does um, a lot of undercover work. So she was explaining to Mark what she does. And he said, so you mean to tell me that you can just, she does surveillance work as well. You can just like hide in a bush and no one will see you there. And she said, yeah, that's the job. And he's like, I don't buy it. I don't buy it. How can they not see you there? She said, okay, Mark. So that weekend, Trish hid under Mark's signing table. For about half an hour. She was right here. And he was signing away and didn't know she was there. And she did it to prove a point. So eventually I go over to Mark and say, have you seen Trish? He looks at me and goes, no. And I pointed like this, and he looked down and went, Oh my god! <laughs> pretty funny. Um, what are some of your best or favorite memories from shootings on a, a set of Stargate Atlantis? 
the food. <laughs> we had um, the most magical caterers. It was just the best. They made these breakfast sandwiches. I called them crack sandwiches because it just like got to be a problem. If you if you look, you can see us slowly gaining weight. Um, I remember in season five watching David Hewlett try and do up his jacket. He was having a lot of trouble. It was a lot of like trying to zip it up, um, and I. My uniform was getting tighter and tighter, and I went into the wardrobe truck and I said, "Guys, can we can we just stop putting my clothes in the dryer? It's just they're getting tight." And he said, "We don't put your clothes in the dryer." And I was like, "Okay, all right. good job, good job." Um, but the food was just so good, so I got everybody on these stupid crack sandwiches. And I don't know why they were so good. It's like bacon and egg and tomato and cheese. I think it's because they cooked it on a griddle. So it was like a grilled cheese with like a sort of runny egg in the middle and bacon. I'm like, God, it was so good. So I got on them and David got on them and Jason got on them. And Jason ate two. Like he would put two in his body every morning and have like egg yolk on his beard. Which I think is why when people are like, oh my God, you know Jason, he's so hot. I'm like, his egg yolk on his beard. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, we had the best food in the world. Our, one of our caterers was also a pastry chef. So at the end of this glorious table full of food, there would be like a five-tiered cake that Anthea had baked that day. And look, if there's a cake there and it's free, you're gonna eat the cake, <laughs> right? Exactly. I really miss miss those caterers. <laughs> the food makes or break a set. It really does. Like, we work hard for that lunch break, so when you get good food, it's awesome. We have, like, steak and lobster on Fridays. Oh, guys. That's ridiculous. Af After filming Firefly and Serenity, is there anything you kept from the sets? I kept... I... I did not take anything <laughs> because I was raised in the film industry and also raised not to steal things, um, but everybody else did. So there are lots of things that I'm kicking myself for not taking. Um, Nathan got like a box of stuff. He just took uh, at will. Um, he would walk on, you know, the set in the last week and just take whatever he wanted at that point. He, he had zero you-know-whats to give at that point. And was like, I'm just gonna take it. What are they gonna do? What are they gonna do, Joel? Are they gonna fire me? I'm taking it. <laughs> so, he gifted me some things. Um, the Kaylee's Room door sign. And the hammock. And I think that's all I got. Yeah, I think that's all I got. Nathan has them all beautifully um, stored in a glass cabinet in his house. And you can see, you go in there. I told, I told my husband, we were going down to LA to stay with Nathan, and I said, Nathan's house is a bit like Firefly-tastic, just so you know. And Charlie's like, really? And I'm like, yeah, I'm not kidding. When we got there, he was like, you are not kidding. Um, he has these like, he has a guest room with like Malcolm Reynolds pillows. <laughs> Because I think he gets like a real kick out of me having to like rest my head on a pillow shaped like now. Yeah, he's special that one. Where am I looking? Okay, right here. Hi. Um, you know we really don't know anything about any t-shirts or anything, but if we were going to go looking for a new t-shirt, when might we want to go look for one? And where would we? Or would you go looking? Yes. So, do you follow me on Instagram? Yes. Okay. I will post as soon as they go up for sale. I promise. Okay. I'm going to post you a link and everything. We're, We're going to do it at the, the end of May. At the end of May. Because I'm, I'm going on vacation next week. Yeah. I know. I'm going to Hawaii. Oh. Without my kid. <laughs> Five days, five glorious days of sleeping. So much sleeping. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Watch like day two though, I'm gonna be like, I miss him. Let's FaceTime five times a day. Because that's what I do. That's what we do, right? You're like, want the break, want the break, and then you get the break and you feel guilty and you love them and you miss them. It's ridiculous, this parenting thing. your very favorite scene to film, and why? Oh, man. Uh, that's hard. Nothing outside. Nothing outside. We, uh, we were usually shooting in a very, very hot California sun and sweating like crazy. Jamestown was... The misery on our faces is real. <laughs> and it stunk badly. I don't know why. But it did out there. Um, I have a lot of fond memories from the message. That was our last episode that we shot, and we knew that we were canceled at that point. And I think we just sort of let go and also decided to really soak it up while we still had it. Um, we ruined lots of takes, laughing and being silly. Um, so it was just like, instead of it being really sad, we, we all just laughed our heads off until they called rap. Um, and then there were lots of, lots of crying. Ron, in particular, actually, burst into tears when they called rap. We were all like, Ron, oh my god, he's emoting. Um, yeah, so I, I, I love that scene when we all come out um, in the snow for the funeral. Um, so yeah, that, that episode as a whole. The, the stuff in the, um, the bazaar was really fun to shoot too. It was good times. Hi. Hello. Um, can you speak at all to the rumors about the Firefly reboot? I mean, it's just rumors. Also, the word reboot makes me very nervous. Very nervous, because to me that means like different people, different cast, and I know Mikey. Okay, I, I would become upset if that happens. I just feel like we could all still do it, you know. It's not like we're in our 80s or anything here. Um, but I do get asked about a reboot all the time by everybody. Um, I, you know, went through customs, and the customs officer was like, oh, where are you going, what are you doing? So is, it, it, I heard that the show is coming back, but is that? And I was like, oh my god, unbelievable, it's six in the morning, buddy. <laughs> um, so yeah, I know, I know you want it, we want it too, we really do, especially Nathan. <laughs> very much love that, so, um, Hopefully. You never know, man. This industry's insane. It's crazy. Much stranger things have happened than a reboot of Firefly. So you never know. Hi. Um, Hi. What's your favorite Firefly quote? Oh my god, I have a million. Like a Kaylee quote? Or just a quote quote? I love, I mean, well it's from Serenity. But I love the speech at the end that Mal gives about flying. It makes me cry. It makes me cry every time. It's ridiculous. I was in the movie, and it makes me cry. <laughs> I love the way Nathan delivers it. I think it's just a beautiful ending to that movie. You know what the first rule of flying is? Well, I suppose you do, since you already know what I'm about to say. I do. But I like to hear you say it. Love. You can learn all the math in the verse. If you take a boat in the air that you don't love, she'll shake you off just as sure as a turn in the world. Love keeps her in the air when she ought to fall down. Tells you she's hurt before she keens. Makes her home. Storm's getting worse. We'll pass through it soon enough. 
Um, so yeah, I would say that speech is uh, number one for me. Next question's over here. Hi. So, with your acting career and everything, and all the stuff you've been in, um, one of the ones that I've just recently started watching was The Magicians, and I wanted to know, how did you get into that? I don't know. See, like, no, that, that was the weirdest thing, because they called, and they were like, hey, do you want to do you want to do this? And I was like, where does it shoot? And they were like, Vancouver. And I was like, yes, it shoots at home. Awesome, okay. And they were like, yeah, it's really easy. You only have to come in every once in a while and get gussied up and dressed up beautifully. And I was like, all right, this is awesome. So yeah, it literally fell out of the sky, that one. And I'm so happy for it. And uh, I can't say anything else. I was about to blow something for you, but I won't do that. I get in trouble a lot because I have a big mouth. I can't even say, I just, I'm gonna sit here. I'm just, yeah. Major paranoia. This business takes itself too seriously now. You notice that? Like NDAs and they're always threatening us and we're not allowed to say this and that, whatever. It's just no fun. It's just TV, okay? Anyway, where'd you go? Hi. When you, when you do get those calls and begin a new project, what, what draws you most to a new, new TV series, a new movie, a new project? You know, to be honest, um, it's, it's more circumstantial. So what draws me to a job right now, since I've had my kid, is where does it shoot, is number one. I don't like being away from him. Next week's vacation, not counting. But, um, I went to New York to shoot something for the longest I've ever been away from him, which was two weeks, and it was too long. It was hard. Um, my heart hurt, and I just thought, oof, I don't want to do this anymore. So, um, the where does it shoot is a big one, because if it's for any length of time, that means everybody's got to come with me. Um, which my husband is fine with, which is lovely, because he can work on the road. All he needs is a computer. Um, and um, now that my son's in school, he started Montessori uh, preschool. I know it's just preschool, but it's back to that whole normal life thing. I just want him to go to school like a normal kid. So I'm hesitant to disrupt our life. But if the job's worth it, worth the trip, then we will go. Um, luckily, a lot of things shoot in BC, which is where I live, um, in Vancouver. So you know, knock on wood somewhere. Um, I've, I've been lucky enough that I, I get to stay home and, you know, do bedtime or see him in the morning or whatever um, and not have to be away. Which is another reason why I love doing The Magicians because it's like, you know, dream job, right? So it'd be nice to get something regular that's at home. That's sort of what I'm on the lookout for. Hello. Hi. Um well, I just wanted to say I um, was big firefight plan. Uh, Everybody says plan. it. Don't worry. And, uh, uh, and especially for Kaylee, like she just always wore her heart on her sleeve, and you know I don't have a subtle bone in my body, so I definitely related to her so much. Um, and um, I remember watching a, co um, a convention where you and uh, Nathan were talking about a prank that you played on him. Where you posed as a fan, and you would like send him notes that like knew things that like a normal fan shouldn't, and then you like sent him after like a few months because he was starting to get like worried, and then you like sent him a card with like your picture on it, flipping him off, like to yes. know it was you. Well, what did so he get you back? Uh, yes. <laughs> How? But what? What happened? This. It wasn't. It definitely wasn't a few months of, of letters. It was just one. It was a Valentine. But this all got out of control because Nathan and I were bored on set one day, and we started coming up with creative ways of, of flipping each other the bird. I don't know why. You get tired on sets and loopy, and it made us laugh. So it just got more and more creative as a thing, and we would kind of like you know, pull a fast one on each other to see if, like, who could do it first sort of thing. Um, and then it got mean, like, it just got mean. He made me a, a he gave me a box, a beautiful butterfly on it, it looked like a jewelry box, and he said, you know, we're coming close to a wrap, and I just wanted to give you this thing, because I love you, and whatever. 
should have known right there. And he had it in his hand, and so I opened the box and put his finger in. This is who we're dealing with. So it was just stuff like that. It just it just really snowballed out of control. Like I went to a hotel in like I don't know what Ireland or something, and you know got to the check-in desk after traveling all day and night or whatever. And they said, oh, we have a, a message here for you. I said, a message? They're leaving me a message in Ireland. They gave me an envelope and I opened it and it was a drawing of my hair. <laughs> I knew who that was from. <laughs> um, so I needed to get him back in some fashion. I was staying in his house. He used to be on a soap and he like, I don't know, I guess he had a couple fan encounters, soap opera fans or something, and he had a little bit of paranoia surrounding that, um, which I knew about and exploited. Um, so I wrote a very creepy valentine, and I stuck it in his mailbox with no stamp, so it looked like someone knew where he lived, and watched him open it and read it, and blood drained from his face, and he said, what is it? What is that? He's like, oh my god, this is bad. This is really bad. What is this? And he looks in the envelope, and there's another envelope within the envelope. And he opens it up, and it was a picture of me going like this. <laughs> which he has framed. <laughs> in his bathroom. <laughs> Still, it got a really good laugh out of me. Really, really good. It's hard, it's hard to surprise him. Like, it's hard to win at pranks with him, so that was really gratifying. But you know, yeah, he got me back many times. He, the the um, uh, blooper reel of um, Serenity, the movie, we were all at the rap party, and they played the blooper reel on a big screen, and at the end, this thing comes up and it says, For Jewel, and I knew. I was like, oh my god, you got me again. And it was a Nathan Fillion action figure, like a doll that came up and flipped me the bird. <laughs> It's relentless. There are often times I just get texts that say finger. <laughs> Very mature. <laughs> so that's the story. You've got to work with some amazing people. Have you worked with your dream actor or is that still in the future? Oh, um, no, I mean, I don't know. I'm a huge Game of Thrones fan. <laughs> I love Thrones. Uh, so, I would, I, I mean, they're, they're sort of my top actors right now on that show, just because I'm such a fangirl for it. Um, but yeah, there are so many actors in the world that I would love to work with. Um, off the top of my head, of course, can't think of anybody right now. But, um, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a funny thing, right? When you meet someone that you love and admire, uh, there's, there's, there's a lot about that moment. It's a moment that you don't forget. Um, when I'm meeting people at conventions, at the autograph table or the photo op or whatever, it's very important to me to leave you with a good feeling. <laughs> because I know what it's like to be left without a good feeling. I've had those moments too, where I've met people and gone like, hmm, you know, don't really get a good vibe from them, or they're sort of rude, or whatever, and it's like, it's disappointing. Um, so when you meet somebody that you love and admire, and they're great, it's, it's just the best. We were at a convention in London, in England, and there were a lot of Game of Thrones actors there. I guess because they all live there, whatever. Um, and it was very thrilling. My husband is a humongous Game of Thrones fan. Massive, massive, massive. Um, and we were sitting in the green room and they all, you know, all the actors are coming in at the beginning of the day and Charlie's eyes are just getting like wider and wider and wider and he leans over to me and he says, everybody in this room knows how it ends. <laughs> and I was like, oh my god, you're right. Um, but Rory McCann was there, plays the hound. And I saw him come in and I went, oh my god. Oh my god, I've got to meet Rory McCann. I don't know how I'm going to do this, but I have to meet him. So I talked my agent into going over and asking him if it was okay for a photo. And he said, yeah, yeah, sure. Came over, he's humongous. 
is everything you would want and more. Do you know what I mean? This is sort of one of those positive experiences I'm, I'm talking about. He came over and we, uh, hi, and we take the, the picture, and he doesn't leave. He just sort of stands there, and he's like, so, what show are you from? I don't watch telly. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I'm, there's a show called Firefly. And, oh yeah. Have you been out there signing? I said, yeah. And he's like, did you wash your hands? <laughs> so, did, re recently? Uh, yeah, probably. Don't put your hands in your mouth. So, <laughs> I wouldn't, probably wouldn't do that, but good advice, good advice. And Charlie's like freaking out beside me. And then someone comes over and says, Mr. McCann, would you like a beer from the bar? And he goes, would I like a beer? Would I like a beer? What do you think? Don't even ask. <laughs> and we were like, yes! That's just exactly what I wanted. <laughs> Meeting the hound, you know? Anyway, we're all fans of somebody. <laughs> Don't even ask. It's the best. I think he drank it in like two gulps. It was great. <laughs> I also got to sit next to Bran the entire weekend. His autograph table was like right next to mine. It was very hard. It was very hard not to be a loser um, in that whole scenario. He was lovely. They're all lovely and wonderful. But yeah, it was pretty cool. Hi. Hi there. So thanks to the internet, we can see all kinds of clips of you and all kinds of conventions. Oh, I know. It's wonderful. It's wonderful. So that made me think. I bet she probably has a wonderful. Josh Wheaton story that she either told or not told that many. I mentioned. Many, many. I um, my favorite Joss Whedon story. I was in the UK at a convention by the Heathrow Airport. Um, and I was with Sean. And Joss was there doing the Avengers. And he texted me and said, I saw on Instagram that you're in the UK. Um, do you want to meet for a drink or whatever? I want to see you guys, I'll come to your hotel. I said, okay. So we came to our hotel, we had a drink, and another drink, and another drink. And Joss goes, I want to go dancing. Let's go dancing, Joss loves to dance. And we're like, we're in Heathrow. Like, there's nowhere to go, Joss, it's Heathrow. And he's like, there's gotta be some place. And Sean said, well, the convention is having a party tonight. And I said, Sean, we cannot walk into a convention with Joss. And he said, we could try. Why don't we put him in a disguise? <laughs> We're quite drunk, okay? <laughs> so our brilliant plan is to, my best friend Jen was also there on this trip, to put Jen's pink scarf around Joss's head and a pair of glasses and roll into this convention center. And Sean is like, I want a disguise too. And so he puts like a pair of glasses on and I'm like, what is this a Clark Kent scenario? Like, that's not a disguise, but whatever. So we go to this party. It's like going, you know, it's like walking in with Beyonce or something, okay? So we go into this party and you can kind of see the wave happen. Someone, you know, Joss waltzes up to the bar in his pink scarf and his glasses and someone notices him and tells someone else and tells someone else and tells someone else and it's just a ripple happening like this. And I'm like, everybody knows. You, I think you can take off the pink scarf now. <laughs> but to everybody's credit, because this is the Firefly fandom, no one bugged him. We created this insane dance circle on the dance floor, and we all just danced the night away, basically, until they turned the lights on at two in the morning. And Joss got up on the stage, and someone threw him a mic, and he basically said a hello and I love you to so this big crowd of fans. It was really something. And then we all went to McDonald's, <laughs> as you do. <laughs> it was a fun night. Any chance that you might be in the rookie? I'd like to be. 
Speaking of the rookie, be fun. Um, my only rule is I do not want to make out with Nathan. <laughs> so, as long as I'm not playing his love interest, everything is fine. But yeah, it's, it's funny, like a lot of people are like, when you have friends who are on successful shows, you're like, you gotta talk to Nathan about getting on that show, or you gotta talk to Gina or whatever. Which is adorable, because we're actors. We make zero decisions. Even if they're the star of the show, they don't get to call the shots on who's on the show. Um, when I did Castle, it was a really fun surprise, basically. Um, I told Nathan, you know, they called me and wanted me to do this episode, and Nathan was like, oh my god, stay with me, you're staying with me. It's like, okay, great. Um, so I took the family down with me, and we made, you know, a vacation out of it. And, uh, I'm the killer in the episode, sorry, spoiler alert. Um, but I have to do this sort of, when they, they find out I'm the killer, I do this sort of confessional speech. And so we did, you know, the scene, and Ethan's like, you know, I've seen a lot of confessional speeches on this show, okay? We do this a lot. You did some amazing stuff there. You were like, you, you were defensive, and then you were emotional, and you were this, and you were that. I'm like, it's like, wow, I forgot. Joel can really act. <laughs> I mean, it's funny when you're friends, right? Like, when I saw him on set in a suit, I was like, look at you in a suit! This is weird. That was lots of fun. So I'd like to, for sure. It'd be fun. Alright, we have time for one more question. No so, pressure. Yeah, absolutely not. Absolutely no pressure. Just kidding. Hi. Um, so my question is, what is the biggest lessons or advice you got from Firefly and what a great last question. I love when that happens. Um, what was your question? Uh, the lessons I got at the end of Firefly? Oh gosh. Um, I think that... I, I feel like the lessons that I've learned have come after um, that point, you know, like in the last like 10 or 15 years, sort of mostly in how to treat people, I suppose. Um, like I said before, it's, it's important, I think, to all of us that we, we leave a good taste in your mouth. <laughs> that might not be like the best way of putting that, but you know, it's, it's important for us to give back to you um, all that you've given to us and still give to us. Um, but yeah, and speaking on how to treat people, you know, I've, I've been on a lot of shows and I've seen a lot of um, behavior from the number ones on the show. We have a thing called the call sheet, okay? So whoever's the number one is the, the top tier actor, the star. Nathan was our number one. If your number one has great energy, it trickles. It trickles down into the cast, the crew, everybody. And you can feel it when you step onto a show. When they have a bad attitude, you can feel that too. And there's been lots of sets where I've come on and it's like everyone's like tiptoeing around and sort of anxious and you go, oh, you've got a bad number one. That's too bad. Um, so watching Nathan in an action on how to be how to be a star and how to treat people was something that stuck with 19-year-old me. Um, he made a huge effort to learn everybody's name, every crew member's name, which is hard to do, and he would say things like, let's play the name game. Let's see who knows everybody's name. And would ensure that we knew their names too. When we had guest stars come on set, um, it's very intimidating being a guest star because you're coming on to a set where you know no one, everybody's bonded, and you're the newbie. And you're not going to be there that long either. Um, so it just feels kind of funny, you know? You don't know where the bathroom is, you're like, hey guys, and you know, don't really have a buddy. Um, and he made it his mission to make the guest stars feel welcome. I would say, hey, you can come sit with us. You want to have lunch with us? Come on over here, 
here, we got a chair for you. Everybody, this is so-and-so. Um, and he still does that on Castle. When I got to Castle, I, I got into my room and there was a card and a present from Nathan. And the card, you know, had a really sweet message in it, you know, so great working with you again, buddy. And uh, giving me a gift certificate to like a, a hair salon. Which was like really cute, right? It was such a nice touch. And I was like, Nathan, that's so sweet. And then I realized he does that for everybody. <laughs> he, he gives all of the guest stars a present. How cool is that? How awesome is that? So I took that with me. And I thought, you know, if, if I'm ever the number one, I, I want to do that. And I want the vibe on set to be happy and jovial and silly and fun. Because it's not rocket science what we're doing. It's make-believe for money, gang. That's it. Um, so I, I think that that was the most important lesson, is just to, how, to, how to treat people. It's a long answer. Sorry. No, that's great, because that used up exactly our time. Well, so, hey, it's like I've done this before. Maybe. Thanks, so you guys. Have fun. Nice. Thank you to Joel State. After, after a brief break, because Canadians are people too, um, she will be back at her table on the main floor signing pictures and whatever else within reason that you put in front of her. All right, okay. another round of applause for Jules Dane. Well, Q&As are always a lot of fun, especially when you have the celebrities like Jewel who have these great stories. Oh, yeah, she's uh, been in the industry for a long time. Yeah, well, I mean... The stories that she had, it's because it's like, not only are they behind the scenes stuff, but when she's talking about like Nathan, especially, and how they have that ongoing friendship yeah. throughout the years with, uh, you know, the finger prank, you know, throwing each other the finger. Uh, those were great. Those were yeah. so hilarious. I mean, I could always kind of tell that he was kind of a goofball from like watching <laughs> interviews and stuff. But when you have like firsthand experience, eyewitness reports of somebody just being that goofball-y, it's like, okay, obviously it's not a put-on for the camera. <laughs> that is him. <laughs> so that was a lot of fun. And like you said, she's been around for quite a while. Uh, even in the interview I, or the q and I think they said when she was six, she mm -hmm. started. And yeah. you remembered her from, was it Are You Afraid of the uh -huh. Dark? I believe she was okay. in one, maybe two episodes of Are You Afraid of the Dark. Um she did a couple other Disney uh, TV shows that I remember watching her from. And, um, of course, for me, she'll always be my Dr. Keller <laughs> from Stargate Atlantis. That was going to be my other question. You don't know her so much from Firefly nope. as you do Stargate I Atlantis. I do. I know her from more from Atlantis. And her first, very first appearance on Stargate, um, just Stargate before SG-1, before it became Atlantis, she guest starred as a kind of like alien monster. Nice. And she was in full get up. So that was kind of interesting. So it was kind of fun later on because it's like I knew her from watching Disney stuff. So it was kind of weird to try to see her in the makeup. And then it was fun later on her coming back and getting to see her all grown up. And of course, something that is always great about the Q&As are the chance to ask some of your questions. Yeah. And she was really great about the answers that she gave. Uh, she certainly didn't shy away from any of the questions. Nope. And she had, again, more great stories to go along with them. And one of my favorite things was, even though I didn't turn the camera to get everyone she pointed out, but she did point out some of the Kaylee cosplayers there in the audience. Yes. Which was really nice yeah. of her. Especially when she said that she never gets tired of seeing that. Yeah, it's always, you always wonder about that. You know, when you play one role that everyone knows you from and everyone wants to cosplay as, but you've done a bunch of other roles, I've always, you know, curious about, do you get tired of it? Do you like, hey guys, I do other things too. I'm an actor. I do a bunch of stuff. But I do appreciate the ones that they don't shy away from what made them famous or what got them kind of notoriety. Because, I mean, she'd been acting long before she was Kaylee, but, you know, that's kind of what kind of shot her up there. So, you know, that's always that's always interesting. And I, and, uh, along the lines of asking questions about things, I did like um, when she can't answer questions. Because they're like, you know, so, on the magicians, what's gonna... And she's like, mm, I yeah, can't she's, say. She's <laughs> she almost pulled a Tom Holland there and gave away some spoilers. Yeah, so that's always fun, too. <laughs> and they're on current shows, and it's like, you know, 
Tell us a little bit of something about it. Jewel was obviously one of the uh, guest stars at the convention, and it showed by the line that she had waiting oh, yeah. for autographs and everything. <laughs> and honestly, the line went pretty quickly. Yeah, it did. Um, People were very respectful. Yeah. It didn't take up too much of her time. So. so that was really nice. And of course, once we got up there, mm -hmm. uh, we did get a selfie with we her. We did. We got a fun selfie from her, which it was awesome too, because she was like, let's take another one, you know? So it was kind of like, it wasn't a just one and done. Hope it was a good one, you know? <laughs> and she even offered to take it too, which is great because it's one of those things you feel like, okay, you're a celebrity. You get your picture taken all the time. You probably know the best angles to do. So, you know, so maybe she knows she's got the right, right angle. So, <laughs> and also, I mean, that woman, everything about her is like, long like i noticed like she's got really long beautiful fingers i guess from having short fingers i'm always envious of long fingers but she's got long arms long legs so let's face it she was going to get the best angle from us anyway and of course we had to pick up an autograph and mm -hmm. she had a few to choose from on the table she now did. she had all of that you know kaylee firefly love but i had to get my dr keller signature so that was that was also fun and it was great too because she had three different pictures from stargate to choose from and it was kind of hard narrowing it down but but I, I managed well nerd lanes we would love to hear in the comments below any of your uh, celebrity experiences mm -hmm. was there someone in particular that you went to a convention just for or maybe someone while you're at the convention you suddenly became a fan you're like oh wait i remember them from such and such mm -hmm. so please leave those comments down below Give the video a like if you happen to like it, and be sure to subscribe, hit that notification bell, because we're still not done. More VisionCon videos on the way. Don't forget to like us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram so that you can see those more VisionCon videos on the way. And go over to Tee Public, get our merchandise, because we want to see you in those shirts. And remember, nerdlings, if we like it, we nerd it, and you can't take the sky from me.